Welcome friends. Today at GCK Daily we're looking at the presence of God. T.S. Eliot once commented that we frequently discover and walk with companions not of our own generation. We know this to be true. Lincoln is as alive to many as when he walked the streets of Springfield, Illinois. No one can visit areas in Africa so familiar to Livingstone without visualizing his work and sensing his presence or Monticello without being impacted by the mighty accomplishments of Jefferson. Worship is sensing and responding to the presence of God. So how do we respond to the presence of God? Let's listen as we learn some valuable truths from Dr. Kumi about this important topic. I, in that salvation, is innocence. Innocence. Now, if they are causing trouble somewhere, you are innocent of that trouble. If they are dividing, scattering families of their neighbors, and we come to you, you say, I'm safe now. I'm innocent of the action that scattered their family. If they are causing riot in the place of work, and then they say, how about you? How about you? What's your part in this? I am innocent. I'm now a child of God. I don't cause trouble for any manager, any director, any leader, any principal. I don't cause uh, any trouble anymore for any family. There is innocence begotten by the gospel. Innocence begotten by the gospel. It tells us in Psalm 19, verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And it is that now that sets us totally free and makes us innocent. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent. Innocent. Innocent from the great transgression. Oh, is obedience based on his guidebook. The guidebook for the Christian is the Bible. The guidebook that points out to the way of heaven is the Bible. And now, as a child of God, you're saying that salvation means you have obedience that is based on the guidebook that leads us to heaven. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. For God be thanked that she were in the past servants of sin, but ye have obeyed, obeyed, obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. The doctrine was from the Bible. A righteous life. A pure life. A practical, obedient life. And now it says you have obeyed. That form of doctrine. And you obeyed from the heart. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, Being then made free from sin. The freedom that he gives us is freedom from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. And then end naughtiness blocked out with godliness. Naughtiness will try to come in again. Stubbornness will try to come in again. Self-will will try to come in again. But now I am saved. Now I am transformed. Now the sins of the past, they are cancelled. And therefore, there's no naughtiness anymore. If you are a real child of God, the naughtiness is blocked out with godliness. James chapter 1, we're reading from verse 18. In James chapter 1, verse 18, of his own will begat he us 
that means we are born again with the words of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures as we listened we discovered a few key points from this message number one the gospel leads to innocence nothing can ever reverse our guilt but the gospel of jesus if you're looking in the eyes of a child you see the innocence of that child but as the child progresses into adulthood you don't see him getting more and more innocent you see him coming more and more corrupt discovering all the different forms of evil the gospel is the only thing that leads from, from corruption to innocence and as we're washed more and more in the presence of god we're changed from corruption to innocence we're not changing from wisdom to foolishness as well but from corruption to innocence we can still be innocent and wise and the lord gives both number two obedience is based on the guidebook the guidebook is the scriptures the word of god as we learn this guidebook as we study this guidebook as we listen and memorize and meditate on this guidebook we become immersed in his words and his presence that leads us to obedience once you become a christian your identity changes your values and your beliefs change and your capacity changes all these miraculous changes leads us to an obedient life in christ number three naughtiness is blocked out by godliness the gospel crushes all forms of godlessness the gospel is central to all things the authority of christ reigns over all things if you're tempted to, to do naughty things with your mind or with your body or with your finances or your work or with your friends these things are blocked by the godliness of God. For each temptation, resist the devil. For each temptation, draw near to the Lord. Don't dwell in the temptation and remain with it and sit with it and test your strength against it. Flee, run, don't go near it. Draw near to the loving, peaceful presence of the Lord and he will draw near to you. This is one of the greatest secrets of the Christian faith. And then in verse 19, therefore, my beloved brethren, saved souls, real believers, let every man be sweet to hear and slow to speak, slow to roll. Verse 20, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Verse 21. In verse 21, wherefore lay apart, lay aside, abandon, reject, let there be a shield between you and filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Get it off your life. If you claim to be saved at home, in church, in the office, on the street, anywhere you are, naughtiness is blocked out with godliness. It says, all the superfluity of naughtiness, get them off and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. The salvation. That's the meaning of salvation. That's the outcome of salvation. That's the experience of salvation. But you know, we want to live in the fullness of Christ by faith. And if we're going to live in the fullness, we'll move on from salvation to sanctification. Right now, in this moment, put aside your temptation. Put aside your sin and ask the Lord right now, to come into your life to make his presence known to you draw near to him take some time right now to do so and may the lord bring his presence and his peace to you in the name of his son jesus whosoever will call on the name of the lord will be saved once you realize i cannot save myself my good works are not good enough my kindness not kind enough 
my righteousness not righteous enough only Christ because he died on the cross of Calvary can save me you come with that understanding salvation will come father we thank you for making your word clear to everyone that it's not the works of our hand it's not our marriage it is not any good thing we have done but it is what christ did on the cross of calvary that he bore our sins and has taken all our sins away lord i pray for everyone putting their trust and their faith in christ tonight save them forgive them set them free from their sins in jesus name from now on what they couldn't achieve and do by themselves i pray that your grace will come into every life that they'll go from here and live in the grace of god in the righteousness from heaven in jesus name lord grant everyone assurance of their forgiveness assurance of their salvation new strength new power new life new nature grant you everyone to go and sin no more in jesus name write their names in the book of life in heaven thank you lord because i know you have answered in jesus name we pray your time has come you raise up your hand for your miracle touch the place where you have the challenge and then after the final amen you'll open your eyes and check up you'll find god has made all things possible in your life raise up that hand expect the miracle put your attention on god with God, all things are possible. Father, we come to you tonight with implicit faith, unshakable faith, unwavering faith, knowing that with you all things are possible. We come for those possibilities of unshakable faith tonight. And we're asking, oh Lord, perform your miracle in every life. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Deliver the oppressed. Yeah. Break every yoke. Yeah. Destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Lord, I pray that what men could not do, and what men cannot do that at this very moment now over here on these grounds over the radio over the television and in every locality everywhere all over the world what men could not have done do it now in jesus name let the incurable be cured right now issue of blood dry up in jesus name cancer be healed in jesus name tuberculosis you are healed in jesus name every yoke every affliction be taken away from your life and from your body at this moment in jesus name healing everywhere now deliverance everywhere now miracle everywhere now lord confirm it in everyone 
testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for joining us for another episode of GCK Daily, the Global Crusade with Kumi. We believe that this episode has drawn you into a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, who loves you so much and gave his life that you might live. As we conclude today, we would love to get to know you personally. Please visit us at gckhq.org slash pwc to connect with us and enable us to share our helpful resources with you. Also, the greatest thing you can do is share today's message with a friend so they can be blessed. We are grateful for the time you have given today and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow on GCK Daily. We also invite you to join us at our next Global Crusade. Times and dates are listed on your specific geographical time. Thank, Thank you. you.